we're going to sketch the graphs of two polar equations. The first one is r equals g of theta equals 1 plus sine of theta. And the second one is r equals h of theta equals to 1 minus sine of theta. Now to sketch the first graph, we're going to need two results. The first result is a trig identity sine of pi minus theta is equal to sine of theta. Now to see why this is true, kind of review a little bit of trigonometry. We're going to use another trigonometric identity which is sine of a minus b equals to sine a times cosine b minus sine b times cosine a. And so let's apply it to sine of pi minus theta, which is now sine of pi times cosine of theta minus sine of theta times cosine of pi. Now sine of pi is 0, so this is 0. Cosine of pi is minus 1. Minus sine theta times minus 1 is equal to sine of theta which is what we wanted to show. Now the second thing we're going to need is when we have a polar graph, how do we tell, how do we determine it's symmetric with respect to the y-axis or the line theta equals pi over 2. So this is where we want to see how to detect symmetry with respect to WRT stands for with respect to y-axis which in polar terms is theta equals to pi over 2. So to see that, we are going to sketch, make a real quick sketch here. This is theta equals 0, which we call the polar axis. This is theta equals to pi over 2, and that's the symmetry we are interested in. Suppose we have a point on the graph, which is r theta with those polar coordinates. So this is our angle theta in this length is r. If we do have symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2, then we should get a point exactly on the opposite side of that line. Now this angle is also theta radians, and this is also r. But the angle measured from the polar axis, or from theta equals 0, will be this one, of course, in the counterclockwise direction. And it's 180 degrees minus theta, or pi radians minus theta. Therefore, the polar coordinates of this point are r and pi minus theta. So the way to detect symmetry with respect to line theta equals pi over 2 is look at the original equation, which in this case r equals g of theta, then replace theta with pi minus theta, plug it into the function. If we get back the same r, if we just get back r, then we've detected symmetry with respect to the line theta equals pi over 2. So our first equation was g of theta equals 1 plus sine theta. And let's plug in pi minus theta for theta. This is 1 plus sine of pi minus theta by trig identity or result a. That's exactly 1 plus sine of theta which is our original g of theta. So in fact, our equation, the first equation, r equals g of theta equals 1 plus sine theta is symmetric with respect to the y-axis or the line theta equals pi over 2. And that means all we need is just to see what it looks like on one side of that line and symmetry will take care of the other side. So let's plot some points. We'll look at the fourth quadrant and the first quadrant. Here's our theta, here's r. We'll start in the fourth quadrant with theta equals minus pi over 2. Cosine of minus pi over 2 is minus 1 plus 1. That gives us 0. Then we look at minus pi over 3, and that will give us 1 minus square root of 3 over 2 for r. At theta equals minus pi over 4, r will be 1 minus square root of 2 over 2. At minus pi over 6, r will be 1 minus 1 half, which is 1 half. At 0, sine of 0 is 0, so r is 1. Then at pi over 6, we get 1 plus 1 half, that's 3 halves. At pi over 4, 1 plus square root of 2 over 2. At pi over 3, 1 plus 
square root of 3 over 2 and at pi over 2 r will be 1 plus 1 which is 2. Now we are going to sketch the graph and we look at the right hand side what happens on the right side of the line theta equals to pi over 2. So let's plot a couple, all these angles. This is angle minus pi over 3. And then this represents angle minus pi over 4. This angle minus pi over 6. And then over here this will be pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. So at minus pi over 2 we are at 0. At minus pi over 3 we have r equals 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. It's positive so it's in this direction. It's on this side. 1 minus square root of 2 over 2 is positive larger than 1 minus square root of 3 over 2. So it's over here. 1 half is larger than that. Uh, if theta equals 0 we get 1. At pi over 6, we get 3 halves, then 1 plus square root of 2 over 2, 1 plus square root of 3 over 2, and finally over here we get 2, which is the largest value. And now let's trace these points and form a polar graph. That's half the graph. The other half is obtained by symmetry, so it will look like that. And you can see it's heart-shaped. That's why it's called a cardioid. Now we could also have obtained this graph by the following although what I just showed is the best way to do it uh, by using symmetry and getting half the graph and only using simple values for theta but we could have also done the following in the previous video we had f of theta equals 1 plus cosine of theta which is another cardioid and we showed the graph of this cardioid was as follows. So this is theta equals pi over 2. And this cardioid looked like this. Now, in terms of graphing one polar uh, equation from another, if g of theta is equal to f of theta minus alpha, and we know the graph of f of theta, then the graph of g of theta is obtained from the graph of f of theta by rotating that graph by alpha radians in the counterclockwise direction. So let alpha equal to pi over 2. Since we already know the graph of f of theta equals 1 plus cosine of theta, which is right here, let g of theta equal to f of theta minus pi over 2, which is 1 plus cosine of theta minus pi over 2. And to evaluate this, we'll look at another trig identity. This is 1 plus cosine of theta times cosine of pi over 2 plus sine of theta times sine of pi over 2. Now, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So this part is 0. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. And this is equal to precisely 1 plus sine of theta. So what that says is that the graph of 1 plus sine of theta is obtained from the graph of 1 plus cosine of theta by rotating the graph of 1 plus cosine of theta in the counterclockwise direction by pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees. Well, since the graph of 1 plus cosine theta looks like that and rotating it in the counterclockwise direction by pi over 2 radians is going to give us the graph of the cardioid that we want. So that was just another way of doing the same problem that we just did. This is a graph of 1 plus sine theta equals r and this is a graph of r equals to 1 plus cosine of theta. Now let's look at the second graph we wanted which was h of theta equals to 1 minus sine of theta. Now we're going to use t 
technique we just used here to obtain this graph from g of theta equals to 1 plus sine of theta. We'll see what angle we need to rotate this graph by. So let h of theta equal to g of theta minus pi. Let's evaluate this. This is equal to 1 plus sine of theta minus pi. And let's apply another trig identity. This is 1 plus sine of theta times cosine of pi. And then minus sine of pi cosine of theta. Sine of pi is 0, so this is 0. Cosine of pi is minus 1 and this is equal to 1 minus sine of theta. That's what we wanted. So it looks like the graph of 1 minus sine theta, so the graph of r equals 1 minus sine of theta can be obtained from the graph of r equals 1 plus sine of theta by rotating this graph in the counterclockwise direction by pi radians. Well, we know the graph of 1 plus sine theta. It looks like that. So this is theta equals 0. Theta is equal to pi over 2. If we rotate this by pi radians in the counterclockwise direction, well, if we're rotating by pi radians, it doesn't matter which direction, but in general, it's always counterclockwise direction. The graph we end up with is this one. So this is the cardioid R equals 1 minus sine of theta. And this is the cardioid R equals 1 plus sine of theta. And we have completed our task of graphing these two polar equations. For more videos, visit www math prep videos dot com